Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Thought I'd do another video update on Starlink because I get so many questions and still now all these years later, people are still seeing them for the first time and wondering what they are. There's probably not a day that goes by that we don't get a sighting and someone doesn't know what they are, um, mainly because they are so cool looking and kind of freaky at the same time. Even if you know what you're looking at, they're pretty cool. So I've done several videos on this in the past. I post often about it, but I thought I'd do another explainer on what's going on with the Starlinks and what you're seeing. So this was video I took back in May, one of my better videos um, showing the Starlinks moving overhead. This was actually a long train. This was a 54 satellites in a row um, that was launched. And this is 56, okay, I put it on there. So the older version, there were about between 40 and 60 launched at a time. There's a new version where there's about 22 launched at a time. In the last couple of days here in September, you've probably seen the version two, 22 in a row. So what you're looking at right here is recently after the launch. And this is the key part. You can only really see these about one to three days after launch and they have to be over our area and it has to happen an hour or two after sunset or an hour or two before sunrise believe it or not there's over 5,000 of these already up there we're at now uh, right now 4,931 you don't see all the individual ones what you see are the trains and you can see one right now this is a live map of them moving over South America there's actually another one down here over the South Pacific. Some of these are a little bit more visible. When they're deployed shortly after launch, this is what they look like. They're stacked up in the Falcon 9 rocket. And when they get deployed one or three days after, they're really close together. This is where SpaceX tests them. And then they start to move them and they spread out and they go into a configuration where you don't see them. Now, the reason you see them, they do not generate light no satellite does what you're seeing is reflect reflected daylight or sunlight so the reason it's important that it has to happen near sunset or sunrise is when the sun sets in the west and it's dark overhead when they fly overhead the sun over the horizon is illuminating them high in the sky or up in space and you're seeing reflections off of the solar panels that's what you're seeing so if you ever see them kind of glint and sometimes they go in and out of light um, that's what you're seeing they actually fade quickly sometimes because they're in the sunlight and then they go into the shadow of the earth and you don't see them. Um, so it's really important that you have to see them shortly after sunset or just before sunrise. And that's kind of hit or miss. So people ask it, when's the next time I can see them? Well, I don't post as much about them anymore because it happens so often. Uh, if there's gonna be a spectacular pass that I'm very confident in, you'll see me post about it. But the key part here is knowing when the launches are. The problem is they launch these probably every other day every three days this is a quiet week there's not another launch until friday um, and this can get moved see date and time changes so it's hard to tell you ahead of time hey they're going to be visible because the launch dates literally change hour by hour so until i see the launch happen and i know the orbit it's hard to forecast if you're going to be able to see them so it's kind of like a day-to-day -day thing you have to pay attention 24 7. so what are these things okay i showed you the map they're all over the place right this is the future of our internet Basically, these satellites, um, once there's about 20, there's going to be, I think the, four, the, 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 the goal is to have 20,000 of them up there, which sounds like a lot. It is. But um, eventually, this will provide Internet access for every square inch of the Earth. Um, so if you live in a rural area, you could get broadband Internet. You could use your cell phone in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, that's the goal of this. And it is a really, I think, a very important program. Um, Cause you basically, what happens is if you order this and you can, there's a wait list, you get one of these little dishes on your roof. You can get one of these for your RV, for your camper, uh, for your boat. And if you have power, um, you can actually get basically broadband internet. Um, in fact, some of the news coverage you see from hurricane zones where there's no power or um, any cell service, they're using these to get the, the signal out. So that's what they're for. And you can see them from time to time and occasionally um, here's a quick animation of them getting deployed. Um, this is actually what they look like when they come out. That's why they're in a line. They're all in a row like that. But on nights like last night and the night before, um, if we get them in a perfect setup, you get a great view. And this was my view back in May. I knew it would be a good view because it was a crystal clear night. It was only about 45 minutes after sunset and they were high in the sky. So I'll try to post about them often. Um, but I'll be honest with you, sometimes the, the schedule changes and one will sneak up on us and we'll get a surprise viewing. Um, but if you ever see a line of lights in the sky, it's not a UFO, it's not anything freaky, it's just 
Starlinks. And there will be now 5,000 of them up there. There's about to be a lot more up there over the coming years. So that's a quick update on what happens when you see those ring or, or string of lights in the night sky.